What's good? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. We'll announce our iPhone 5 case winners, but first, to the show. Now, the hottest news and rumors are still surrounding the iPad Mini, and a new report from The Guardian says the Mini is expected to only come in a Wi-Fi version. They also report the revised version of the current iPad, the same one we told you about over a month ago, will bring the new Lightning connector and 4G connectivity that's compatible in the UK as well. There's new images on the web, this time from an Australian writer showing off the iPad Mini's purported design that fall in line with what we've seen time after time. See, I'm a poet and I know it. Now, a new iPad has already shown up in one developer's app analytics with the designation iPad 3.6, according to Mac Rumors. It appears to be using the same A6 chip found in the iPhone 5 or a variation of it. It's believed to be the new updated full-size iPad instead of the mini, which has been seen in logs using a derivative of the iPad 2's A5 chip. Now, some outlets report that production challenges with components for the MaxiPad Mini will limit launch supplies of the device. But the Wall Street Journal says component suppliers are pushing to meet Apple's plans to build more than 10 million units in the fourth quarter. That means make sure you have at least a 7-inch stocking or bigger to put more things in the stocking. All right, we're done with the iPad mini talk, and we still expect an announcement this month, but what about MacBook Pro 13-inch retinas? According to our CNET sources, the 13-inch Retina Pro is still on track for production in the fourth quarter, but it's not clear if they will make it in time for the holiday season or if we'll see them released next year. My guess is that if they aren't in production right now, we won't see them until 2013. Now, there's still also no peeps or chatter about new iMacs, Mac Pros, or Mac Minis, and it's starting to feel like we'll see those in the beginning of 2013 as well. Now, the new 5th generation iPod Touch and 7th gen iPod Nano have started shipping to customers this week, so we wanted to show you a few tidbits from our first look at the new iPod Touch with Scott Stein. This is a lot thinner and a lot lighter, believe it or not, than the iPhone 5, but it also obviously is not a phone and doesn't require a contract, but also has slightly different set of specs under the hood. This uses an A5 processor, not an A6. That matches what you'd find in the iPhone 4S and also the second generation iPad. It's a dual core processor. Now it works with Siri, which is built into this finally. And all the iOS 6 apps work here. You can get Apple Maps with Flyover and everything runs really smoothly. But it may have a slight impact in terms of the way that games look. But that Retina display is going to be a killer app for video quality. The fact that you can look at it in 16.9 and be able to look at videos with less letterboxing and also play games that are potentially iPhone 5 compatible and be able to take advantage of all that stuff on the App Store, uh, that's going to be a big appeal here. This is 1080p video uh, and it shoots it with image stabilization, which is a lot like what you find in the iPhone 5. But the camera is 5 megapixels, so it's not 8 megapixels but it does have a lens construction like the iPhone 5. So it's really kind of a hybrid. And it has panorama, which is that new camera feature, and all the other iOS 6 features. Uh, it has HDR, and this new iPod Touch is absolutely the best iPod that's been around. And it's a pretty cool device even outside of that. So there you have it. I'm Scott Stein, and that's a look at the new fifth generation iPod Touch from Apple. All right, that's a look at the iPod Touch. Let's take a look at some of the other wild stuff Apple is thinking of. In a recently discovered Apple patent, Apple is possibly looking into the future with their notebook concept that replaces the traditional keyboard and mouse with a single transparent work area that's multi-touch. When the notebook is closed, the lid can still be used with a touch-sensitive surface that allows you to interact with the display. I should reiterate, this doesn't mean Apple is doing this right now, but it's getting inside the heads of what the Cupertino kids are thinking about. All right, let's check out some quick bites. In a press release, Microsoft's Czech Republic team announced that Microsoft has plans on releasing Office for iOS and Android sometime in March of 2013. We know Office for the iPad has been a long-running rumor, and it would appear to confirm this. Now, Microsoft corporate then issued a statement saying the information was not accurate. Uh-huh. It was on a press release. So guys, put March 2013 on your calendars. And Apple's really affordable, really affordable $29 lightning adapters have also started shipping. But if you don't believe in paying that much, a third-party solution from China-based iPhone5mod.com 
might be the way to go, claiming they have cracked Apple's authentication chip to allow third-party solutions to work. I love you, China. All right, Apple appears to be quietly improving its map app in iOS, including adding a 3D view of the Statue of Liberty, and the placement of some locations have been updated. It's a move in the right direction, but I still wouldn't rely on it for at least a year. And guys, if you love shows like American Idol or X Factor, because who doesn't love hearing talent like this? I do. Now Simon Cowell and Will I Am are working on a new project called X Factor for Tech to find the next great entrepreneurial talent where they hope to find the next Steve Jobs. Will, I hope you don't. All right, let's announce the winners of our iPhone 5 giveaway. And I asked for five apps on my phone from a previous episode. And some of you tried to be outgoing and named more than five. So you were instantly disqualified. And then some of you still want me to let you win because you're Asian. Well, congratulations go out to Dwayne Turner, Sarah Malik, Michael Jason, who has two first names, and then on Twitter, Fernando Gonzalez, and Kevin Nguyen, who won because he is Asian. All right, guys, we'll be in touch and get those cases out to you. That's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com because I still do answer emails, just not all of them. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.